Hello everyone, welcome back. It has been a while, but I am back with a great tutorial. In this tutorial, we are gonna model this camera. At first sight, it is looking quite complex, but it is gonna be really easy with the help of zero measure. Also, today I will show you a new technique I have just discovered with the zero measure, which will give you better and more accurate results. Before starting, if you are interested in more hard surface stuff, you can check my Umrod and Patreon pages. So without further ado, let's start. I will start with image planes as usual. Let's go to the front view, shift and V, go to back and select image plane. I will select the front for this one. Then I will go to the top view. We are not going to use top view, so I will change it to back and change, select my back image plane we can give some transparency now we can bring our cube in first let's check the front view i'm gonna scale my cube then i will hold down alt and add a subdivision surface let's enable wireframes to see what we have then I will increase my segments to get the shape we see in the image plane, like 3 for the X and maybe 1 for the Y. That means that we need to scale our cube one more time. Something like that should be enough. Now I will go to my subdivision surface and increase the editor and render it to something like 4 because we are going to need something poly in order to get a good result with the zero measure so my objects will be in a really high poly then i will bring a cylinder in and rotate it and put it over here i will increase my segments to something like 100 now I don't know if you can see, but this size of the cube is too much, so I'm gonna lower it and check this part. So as I scale Z, the cylinder is becoming more obvious. Actually, to see it better, let's use a bool, add a bool, and put these under the bool. I will. Put the subdivision surface over the top and let's check the image plane one more time i am talking about this part looks like i need to scale the z just a bit let's have the front view open and something like that should be enough maybe we can Move that cylinder down just a bit. Okay, this part is looking nice. You now let's focus on the other parts. I will be doing the same steps, creating primitives, making them really high poly, and subtract them from my original cube. Let's work on this lens part again. A cylinder and make it really high poly like 100 maybe 200 the number is not important just make sure that it is a really high poly mesh then i'm gonna put the cylinder right under the other cylinder it's not gonna work because these two need to be in a single null so i'm gonna select them hit alt and g now it should work i will rename that group to sub now let's see what we have like this button for this one i will bring a cube in scale the cube then i will enable the fillet for the fillet radius i will go all the way up then i will put a really high number for my fillet subdivision like 20 
let's move it over here then i'm gonna put that cube under my subgroup perfect now we are gonna have something similar shape on the top part so i will hold down control and drag that cube which will duplicate this one but i will need some rotations like this one and this one if you hold down shift it's gonna snap the rotation value now i want this to be right in the middle so i'm gonna zero the x out as you can see nothing happened because i am in the object's coordinates so i will press w which will change its orientation to the world now we know that you should not position the x but z so i will position the z to zero which should be right in the middle Okay, I believe the front side is done. Now let's check the rear side of the camera. First one is that camera part. Uh, sorry, the screen part. So the best option is a cube. Bring a cube in, scale it. To get rounder edges, we need to enable fillets. Something like. 27 then again i will need lots of subdivisions let's make it 25 i want this to be somewhere around here and put that in my subgroup you can ignore the inside parts they are going to be deleted anyway now we have this part these buttons i will Add another cube, scale it, then enable the fillet and go all the way up. Then lots of segments again. Put that under the subgroup. Perfect. I believe we have one last piece. It is not visible in the image planes, but it is somewhere around here. Let me see if can see it if I lower the transparency. No, so we are gonna kind of improvise. I will. Let me see. Yeah, we can copy that one. Hold down control and move it down, which will duplicate it. Again, I want this to be right in the middle. Maybe we can change the size. To make this faster, I will turn off Boolean for the moment. And let's make this one something like that. Because we changed the size, we need to set this to its maximum value, which will give us give us the perfect circular shape. Again, I will enable Boolean, and that's all. Before making anything editable, I will go back to the subdivision surface and make it 5 just to make sure because as I told you, we, will, we are going to need something a high poly in order to get better results with zero measure. So we can make a duplicate of this bool and turn it off and hide it just in case we may need it in the future. Now in the bool settings, just Keep it as it is. Don't click on create single object, otherwise it's gonna be hard to delete these inside parts. I will just make it editable. Hit C on the keyboard and delete that subgroup, which will delete the parts in the inside. Let's delete that null. Now it is time to use zero measure. In normal conditions, you will hold down Alt and add B mesh generator. To make the subdivision surface child of the remesh generator but in some cases like this one it is good to just bring that in so the subdivision surface will not be child of remesh because the remesh comes with the mesh density enabled which will try to remesh our object based on its current polygon count like right now we have 
17,000 polygons, so it will slow you down. In such cases, I change, change my polygon target mode to polygon counts, like 2,000 is a good starting point. Now we can put the subdivision surface. Actually, let me rename that to came base, and I'm going to put that under the remesh. Okay, now it's time to check the mesh to see if we have a good result. At first sight, it is looking really good. If you check that these rounder shapes, especially, this part is looking a little odd, but we are going to work on them, such as this part. So having this kind of topology indicates that the polygon count we set is too low so we need to higher that number but overall it did a good job as i told you this is not enough though so i'm gonna set it to something like 3000 sorry 3000 now everything is looking nice same here maybe this part needs some working I have recently discovered anything. If you set this polygon count to something higher, like 5000, or let's say that 10,000, then if you bring a new measure, and let me change it to polygon count and set it to 2K. So if you put the older remesh under the new remesh, this new remesh will give you a better result, as you can see. If you remember, first time I put my remesher with 2000 counts, polygon counts, it didn't give me that much accurate results. So this is my recent discovery. Of course, it's not going to be always perfect, like this part. Something is missing over here. Maybe we will need something higher than 2000. So let's try. 2500 okay now this is looking nice this part again might be a problem but overall not bad so this number is looking Perfect. This part is fixed. This part is also great. The bottom part, this part. So everything is looking great overall, which means that we can make that image editable. Again, just in case you can make a duplicate of this one and hide it and turn off it, then you can make this one editable. Hit C. And our mesh is ready, but not perfect. For example, this part is stretched just a bit and same here. So let's try to use smoothing deformer. I will hold down shift and select smoothing deformer. And you can see the effect. By the way, I will work on this part just a bit. Because the distance between these points are not even and might be a problem, especially on these curved edges. So let me quickly work on this. Okay, that should be enough. Don't need to spend too much time now let's enable that as you can see if i enable smoothing deformer the inside parts except these border edges will shrink so in order to solve this problem i will need an object to project my current object like if you remember this one i can control c and control v that one and I can project my mesh on this one. So I will hold down shift and shrink wrap deformer. 
it should be under the submitting form work and put my subdivision surface actually let me rename that to projection and hide it so if i turn on and off the shrink wrap you're gonna see the effect we don't get much from that smoothing deformer so we can duplicate it a few times but i believe this is the limit for these parts so we can apply this deformer so right click connect objects and delete now let's work on this part it's gonna be easy just double click on that loop it should select all of these edges then hold down control extrude this then i am gonna right click select line counts turn off visible only because i want to cut to other parts where i cannot see from the front view like that delete this Now I am gonna hold down control, scale this, then right click, close polygon hole tool, enable grid option and close that hole. Now we can add spotting edges like this one and this one. Then I want to work on the lens part. Let's switch to front view, hold down control, scale, switch to move tool, again hold down control to extrude. I want this part to be perfectly flat, so switch back to scale tool, scale, then hold down shift, and stop at 0%, then hold down control, scale, which will extrude to edges, switch back to move tool, hold down control, let's see, yes, we will need another extrusion, hold down control again, extrude, move these edges, then I believe I need to scale this just a bit by holding control, which will give me these extra polygons. Then hold down control, extrude, switch to scale tool again, scale. I will do that one more time. Then I'm gonna move this on the Z axis. Then one last extrude. By the way, let me turn up that for plane and let's see yes we are gonna need a bevel on these edges bevel them i will increase my subdivision number to two so that i can select these polygons in the middle and move them with the normal move tool it is right here i will select my loop cut tool and edit these loop cuts okay actually let me the subdivision surface over the top okay here here and of course here here and this one okay looking perfect now i want to work on this part quickly double click on this hold on control extrude then i will select extrude extrude these edges then hold down control again uh, enable subdivision surface i will let these sporting edges now the top part before making any extrusions as you can see the distance between these points are not even which will may create problems Because the disc shapes are very easy to break if you have small uneven points or edges you don't need to be too accurate though something like that should be enough let's test that double click on this hold down control extrude two times because i will use these as sporting edges no hit q and everything is looking nice so this part is done let's check this part 
again i see some uneven point over here other than that everything is looking great just double click on them hold down control extrude oh actually if i remember correctly let me lower the transparency yes i should select these edges and move them on the z-axis to get that kind of bevel between the edges then again extrude actually before doing that i want this part these edges to be perfectly flat again just like we did in this lens part so scale the z then hold down shift to make it perfectly flat now i will go back to extrude extrude this let's see we are gonna need something like that i believe of course it's not gonna be perfect we can use rotation option of the extrude tool by holding shift so after the extrusion if you hold shift and move the mouse uh, the rotation of these new edges will be shifted but to get a perfect flat surface i will select this by with loop selection and scale down one more time to zero and i will hold down control extrude these two times q of course supporting edges one over here and one here perfect now another part for the buttons is going to be easy just as i did for this part i will move these on the z Let's make this perfect flat by scaling them to zero. Now I will use the new close polygon hole tool. Mm. It is looking right, but not perfect. So in this kind of situations, we need to kind of help the close polygon hole tool to get more accurate results, like bridging these edges, which will give us better edge flow. I'm gonna close this with I'm gonna bridge this with it's chance you you may say that why don't you use bridge tool because like if I select bridge tool sometimes you may accidentally bridge the edges you don't want so you need to be really careful while using the bridge tool so in this kind of Objects I like to use stitch and sieve, just select the edges, then hold down shift and connect the edges. Then I will need some segments in this new polygon, like five. Then let's see what we are gonna get. Okay, much better. We are not done yet because we are gonna need these discs. So let's select these. Can select these as well. Then I will make an inset, just a bit, not too much. Then I will right click, select with circle. I will enable project surface. Always keep that on. Then make a disk shape. I will move it to the left just a bit. Okay, now I can delete this. I will do the same thing on these polygons, select them with the live selection tool. Let me see, yes, these are going to be enough. Again, just to make space for the disk shape, I will make an inset and select fit circle. position it then delete select these edges hold on control extrude them two times with q we are gonna need a sporting edge right here it looks like this part is not perfectly flat 
So let's make some loop selections so that I can select this part only. Then I will scale them to zero on the Z. Q. It looks like it is not a problem. Maybe we can select these points to get a better flow of and some sporting edges on this part select ease hold on control and slide them which will create these new extra edges same here okay now this is looking nice now we have the bottom part this time though we are not gonna model something like these parts for this part we are gonna do something different let's use close polygon hole tool okay this is not ideal again we need to help the tool by bridging some of the edges like these ones with stitch and sieve tool and give some segments with loop cuts then let's use it one more time as you can see the result is way better than the first try and this one now i will switch the edge mode double click on these edges then make a full selection after that split these polygons where is that yes split go back to original one go with this for this one if you remember the projection part i'm gonna do the same thing i wish that we made some duplicates of these deformers but anyway let's select this one hold down shift i don't think we are going to need smoothing for this one shrink wrap will be enough so select that and put the projection under the target object i can apply this deformer right click on the object connect objects and delete then while these edges are selected i will hold down control extrude them two times Let's go back to this one and these are all selected. Hold down control, extrude these two times. I need to make these into a single group so that subdivision surface will work for both of these. Looking real nice. Maybe just a little inset for these polygons. Yes. Right click, inset. Something like that should be enough. We can slide these. Because they are too close to each other. Okay, if you get these sharp edges, you need to bring the value of the function up just a bit. Now let's select these, make an inset, and use the fit circle tool again. Then I will hold down control and scale these polygons and move them up. Hold down control, extrude them two times, then you can delete these. Then I will add some sporting edges, select the points because they are too close to each other. Hit Q and looking nice, turn off solo mode. Now let's see what we need to do more, like the top part, for example. I can model this part from the existing polygons, just split them, move them up. I'm gonna scale them to zero to make them perfectly flat. Let's use the close polygonal tool. Again, it's not that good, so I'm gonna select some edges, reach them, add some segments. Then close polygonal tool. Nice, perfect. We have triangle over here, uh, but I don't think it's going to be a problem. I will invert the selection, make an inset. Then another one over here. Hit Q. Perfect. Since this triangle is right on a flat surface, it's not going to be a problem. 
So you can leave it there. Then while we are on this part, let's model this part, make a loop selection, split it. By the way, split shortcut is UNP, or you don't know those shortcuts. All of the tools are used are right in that menu. If you right click, you are gonna get this. So for split, you need to select this one. Anyway, let's select these edges, move them. I'm gonna make them perfect or flat. Maybe we can flatten this out too. Let's go back to this one. I'm gonna use close polygon all tool. This time it isn't looking that bad, so I'm gonna use this. Maybe we can make a full selection and an inset. Again, since this is a flat surface, the triangles will not be a problem. If you hit Q, we are going to see that. Now, let's see. Yes, this part. Make a loop selection. Then, split the polygons. I'm going to right click and select normal axis mode and move them on the Z just a bit, not too much. Double click on these edges, hold down control, extrude. Let's see, yeah, something like that should be enough. I will hold down control, scale these edges, then close polygonal tool. This tool works great with this kind of these shapes. Anyway, let's make a selection and move these on the Z. Then an inset for for the edges, then I'm gonna add these ones. Hit Q, and uh, this is looking perfect. Let's check the last part and finish the front sides. I will hold on Q to turn off side the surface and select the mesh I want to work on. So for this part, I will make a loop selection, then split these parts. I will just select these edges. Let me go back to word axis and hold on control, scale these edges like that. Then I will make loop selection, fill selection to delete these and scale these edges. Move them over here. Actually, I'm gonna move them to somewhere around here, but I will scale them just a bit so we will not see the inside part. Now I will hold down control, extrude this two times, then yeah, the part inside is very similar, so I can duplicate that. Before doing that though, let me center the axis of that object, hold down control and move it. Then scale it. Yeah, perfect. Maybe I can position it over here so that I can select these points and move them on the Z just to get some kind of radiation. Now I will hold down Shift and add a sphere which will position it right over here, then I can scale it. So, you know, we are using South surface technique. So these triangles are not much acceptable. So I will change my type of for the sphere to hexadron. I can lower that to 12 over here, which means that I need to scale it just a bit. Okay, this part is looking great for me. Now let's check the rear sides. So let's select this one and make a loop selection because we are going to split this up then let's solve it and again i'm gonna i will use close polygon all tool and let's see what we're gonna get again it is not bad but not ideal so let's reach these edges let's give some segments 
like twelve plus polygon also. Okay, now it is looking much cleaner. Again, we have some triangles, but it's not gonna be a problem. I will make a full selection to select these polygons then any set, but just a bit not too much. I cannot do it. So something is going on over here. Let me see. Some of them are intersecting. So let me undo that a few times and try to give more segments to this polygon. Uh, the last time we gave to laugh, so let's try 15 or let's make it 16. Then plus polygon all tool. Okay, now it is looking much cleaner. No intersections. Let's make a field selection and another inset. Let's see if this worked this time. It looks like it did. Another look at then turn off solo mode, hit Q. Perfect. Now for these buttons. By the way, let me rename these and assign some random materials. I will just change the colors. Okay, now I will continue to work on these buttons again. Loop selection. I'm gonna scale this by holding control, which will give me these new polygons. Then I can use close polygon all tool. Again, this tool works really good with these shapes. Then I want to do something different on this part. I will enable soft selection, lower the value to something like, let's say, 35. Then I'm going to move that point on the z-axis. I will turn off soft selection and move that point just a bit. Then make a field selection to select this polygon island. Then I will scale this. If you have a depth even if it is just a bit, you can scale this like that. So something like that should be enough, I believe, to make sure I will enable subdivision surface. And this is looking great. While we are here, let's center the axis of the object. Axis, center axis to then I can hold down control and move that down. I'm going to scale it just a bit. Select these, right click, connect objects and delete. Rename these two buttons. Different color, like this one. And we can delete these selections. Also, let's enable emit occlusion. Now it is time to model this part it's gonna be really fun because i will use the new bevel uh, sorry bridge tool first let's select base and i need to select some polygons these ones select these four polygons because i will make a circle disc shape first thing before using with circle tool we are gonna need to make an inset otherwise if you just select a fit circle you're gonna get this one you're not gonna get anything as border so make a small inset then use the fit circle tool yeah something like that should be enough then i will make something similar on this part as well inset fit circle Make sure that these are 
very similar in terms of size because we are going to reach them now i'm going to select these as well right click select reach tool and connect these two points now i will give some tension then increase the subdivision i will keep it at three because it's going to be much easier to control this data also i will change my mode to normal average which will give me even sizes for these edges otherwise if i undo it and reach them one more time in normal mode these edges as you can see will be slightly thicker than the other ones so it is always good to use normal average one i will need supporting edges as usual hit q and this is looking perfect we can play this because we set the number very low like three so it's going to be easier to play with this anytime now it is time to model this one it's going to be really easy i will bring uh, circle in change the plane and let's position it over here of course we are gonna need some scaling that should be enough i will make it editable hit c on the keyboard first thing first i will select these and scale them and move them over here after that i will scale them on the x and select that point scale it as well i will add more segments with line cut select line cut cut these ones again scale them and move them over here Any other line cut here? Scale this one. Okay, something like that should be enough. Now it's time to move this over here. now i will add another circle this is going to be for the profile scale it then hold down alt and add a sweep object then put the first circle under the newer one i will go back to the newer one and scale it let's see something like that should be enough i will check the wireframes first thing first i will go to the circles options and lower it to something like one the first circle is doing okay we don't need to change anything we can add another line cut and play with these as much as we want but for me it's going to be enough we are going to need to model this one it's going to be really easy just bring a cylinder in and scale it then i will select the move tool and click on the surface of that sweep object which will position the cylinder right on it then scale it then i will hit w to change the orient orientation of the axis to world eh, sorry object Scale it a 
then I'm gonna increase the rotation segments to something like 24 because we are gonna make some extrusions and we may get some pinching if your cylinder doesn't have enough resolution. I will rotate this just a bit because I want these splines to fit in between these two edges. If not, I can make it editable and swipe this. Okay, I will select these polygons. Hold down Shift. Then, extrude. We can delete these. They are not going to be visible. Some supporting edges. And I will put that under my subdivision surface group. Also, we can put that sweep object as well. So, because of these tri triangles, your mesh will look like that. I mean, there's no harm with that, but if you want something perfect, you can use that close polygon hole tool with grid option enabled. I'll select them, change its orientation to normal and scale them just a bit. Something like that, then I can go back and play with these points in time. Alright guys, that was it. I hope you learned something new. So the most important part of today's tutorial was the second Z remesher. I mean, if you put a second Z remesher over the existing one, you are gonna get more accurate and better results. So anyway, again, hope you liked the tutorial and learned something new and I will see you in the next tutorials. Bye.